I, I will say I'm a, probably a lot less fun. <laughs> no, I probably wasn't fun, but come on, look just at those going shoes. Out. Right, right. Yeah. Look Shout at out that. my boy Mischief. Get that on film. Got the got the um, yeah. They they it's it's a baby shoe. That's what it's called. <laughs> they made shoes for babies, you know. It's like Danny Brown show. Sit back, relax your eye. Ready now? Why you make studio? Yeah. It's like Danny Brown show. We about to get live. Let's go. Let's go. It's like Danny Brown show. Sit back, relax your eye. Ready now? Why you make studio? Yeah. It's like Danny Brown show. We about to get live. Let's go. Let's go. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, though? Coming to y'all live here at Wild Me Studios in beautiful Austin, Texas. It's the Danny Brown Show. I got the booth boys with me. How y'all fellas doing? Yo, what's up, Great, man? Danny. Hey, Danny. I'm good, man. I stayed up kind of late last night, man. Doing what? what? Are you doing? I was fucking uh, waiting on that damn Schoolboy Q album to come out. <laughs> you listen to it, Danny? Nah, I ain't listen to it. It's dope. It's, I mean, it's cute, Not man. Good. Motherfucker don't miss. Yeah, man. right. I got none other than one of the funniest motherfuckers going right now. What's up, Mark Norman, man? Hey, hey, I've waited for a few schoolboys myself. <laughs> really, man? <laughs> no, I'm joking. I find that, um,. Like in rap music, I don't know, man. Every time, like a you know new album, especially Q's my friend and shit, so I always want to see what they do. Is it like that with comedy? Like when a motherfucker's about to put a special out and shit, like I gotta check this motherfucker shit out. Oh yeah, come on. I mean, uh, we're all waiting for that new Cosby. Oh shit. <laughs> no, but you know, like uh, uh, what are these guys? Um, like these big, you know, Bill Burr, or Chris Rock. Chris Rock got slapped, so we're like, oh, here we go. Mm-hmm. We gotta hear about it. Or Mulaney had went to rehab. So those are the best specials when they're talking about the shit that happened to them. Yeah, and they they make it that funny. Me, it'd be more like a friendly competition. Like I want to see what this motherfucker come with. There's a little of that because they didn't inspire me. Because even like I listened to that shit last night. I listened to it this morning. I'm like, yeah, I'm about to make some shit now. Right. All right. Yeah. You know, get my juices running. You know. Right. But rappers don't have to go because we watch a special and go, oh, I had a thing about midgets. You don't. Nah, do you guys of, have that? It's kind of sometimes like you know certain. I would I would say not like just certain style of a song. Or even just if it's something like too close to like your topic or something like that. But oh. I guess you're right. We all talk about the same shit, just fucking people bitches and right, shooting right. motherfuckers and shit like that. Yeah. Doing drugs. Hose and coke and uh, scissorp, I believe. Yeah. Is that still around? No, sc- yeah, scissorp is still around, but it's way too expensive, man. Really? Hell yeah. I remember when that shit used to be so fucking cheap. Like you could just get fucking syrup, like $50 a line, $20 a line type shit. It's just codeine, right? It's yeah. like cough medicine. But, it, but you know, it became so rare. It, it was it was easier to get when it wasn't as popular as really Justin Bieber fucked the whole shit up. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, Justin. The best syrup was called Activist. It, it tastes like fucking cotton candy in your cup. It was. That's what's so addictive about syrup. It ain't necessarily. I mean, the high is amazing. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's just like any other opiate. You can take a Xanax and get right. the same feeling, but the taste is just like really? it's the best shit you ever taste in your life. I still stand by that to this day. I'd like to try it. I, mean, I remember Lil Wayne was hooked on it. Yeah, he's still going. Really? Yeah, it yeah. Kinda, he can't stop. Kind of fried him a little bit. The thing that kills me about Lil Wayne is that, man, he drinks so much fucking syrup. And you know, that's so much fucking soda. Like right. you can like most people that drink a lot of syrup, they get fat. Like mm. I got fat and fuck. You get that fucking big ass belly and yep, shit. Sugar. And he just still staying in shape, man. Like he don't it don't really affect. I mean his face. He he had a little weird looking face not too long ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think he probably had a tooth pulled or something like that. That too, it really fucks your teeth up because there's a shit ton of sugar in right. it. Right. But yeah, sipping syrup is it was one of my um worst d- drugs I think I really? dealt with. Yeah, because it's like I said, it tastes so good. So you fucking just. You just want to drink it all the fucking time, man. Yeah. Then when you can't find it, it's just like you got the. That's the real addiction of it is that when you can't find it or there's nowhere around its taste, it's just in your mouth like a right. craving, like you want it so bad. But I would drink. I, I would literally like be sipping syrup like mm, I mean every day in some sense, but it would be like days that just fly by, right? And I wake up like three days later when I ain't got no more and fucking looking around <laughs> pizza boxes everywhere. It's just like a fucking heroin addict. You yeah. Really just living a fucking nasty ass drugged out life, man. Well, opioids are the best. I mean, I, I was I had a Xanax problem for a while. It's just, mm. it calms you down. You sleep good. You're just loose yeah. and feeling free. The crazy shit is that the motherfuckers that can take like five or six of them I know. Like, it's insane. The highest I ever got was like two a day. Uh, you know? That's pretty good. Yeah, I know. I was in that motherfucker playing ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> used to bounce off every wall in my house, but I was drink with it, which is very dangerous. That's I wild. I wouldn't tell anybody fucking drinking Hennessy, taking Xanax every day. I took a totem pole. You ever heard of that? The bars, like it's yeah, it's like a long Xanax, and you break it into three or fours. Oh no, I never seen those. I took one of those, a full one, on accident, and I was fucked up for like thirty-eight hours. I couldn't wake up. We used to get what we called the Green Monsters. 
Oh, we called them Green Hulks. Yeah, yeah. the green ones, them shit. Used to, I, had, I remember I had like 500 of them shit. Jesus. Just fucking taking them shits every day like a fucking... I mean, they were great when I used to travel overseas and shit because, mm-hmm. you know, you can take a Xanax, be at the airport, nodding out, eating cheeses and shit. That's the best. Then you just wake up there on, on fucking whatever time there is and yeah. ready to go, you know? But uh, the reason, the, the number one reason that made me want to quit Xanax was that um, I don't really think I had like a a, a, a problem with it to the sense of where I was craving them and I just wanted to do them. I just liked them, you know, but it, it would fuck up my memory. Oh, really? And there would be times where I'd be taking Xanax, you know, every day, and then I had to go do a show, then I'd get up on stage, and I think I got it. Yeah. As soon as the shit started, be like, oh, oh, I don't uh, know the words to this song. That's terrifying. Yeah, it's some of the worst shows I ever played. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the fucking Xanax, man. At least with Australia, you can blame it on that flight. It's like 22 hours or whatever. I was asleep the whole time. Oh, that's nice. The best was I, I took I took Lean to Africa with me. Wow. And that was like a fucking 20-something hour flight. Yeah, Who's Lean in lean? Africa with some real nigga shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was out there fucking sipping Lean and shit. I had a good time in Africa. Africa was great, man. What's the difference between Lean and, and the other one? What? What's the other one? Uh, the... The the sweet stuff. That's lean. Oh, that's the same as yeah. It's same just as different, lean. you know, different slang words for it and shit. Got it. Got they it. They call it po, like po up. You know mm. what I'm saying? It's a big deal in Texas. That's really their culture. It came from you know all these motherfuckers in Texas. They really, it's like fucking. They they really pissed that the whole world has you know took to it and shit. And motherfuckers is doing that shit for fun. Right. But now, like I say, you can get it for like fifty dollars. You know, they they sell it in like you know you can get like you know it's about a pint. Oh really? I mean, not about a, I mean, you can buy a pint, but I mean, um, about a line, which is like an ounce, I think. Uh huh. And um, right now it's going for like thousands of dollars a, a, a line. Jesus, which is crazy. Like to get like a fucking so, and these kids are doing it now because they grew up listening to rappers talk about it. So they mm-hmm. finally at the age and they spending thousands of dollars wasting all their money just to go to sleep. I'll I'll stick with fentanyl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cheaper. It's cheaper. It's effective. But that's how good opioids are. Is like the Sackler family has killed millions of Americans, and we're like, ah, let them keep going. Mm-hmm. It's it that's works. the crazy part about it. That when you look at like these big pharma companies, it's pretty much like drug dealers, man. They can oh, just yeah. make fucking millions of dollars and like just get away with the shit, like completely. Because even I like me, my my crazy shit is like you know I really love Adderall, and just to think about like a fucking ah oh, Adderall is great, a fucking elementary school student just fucking doing Adderall I gotta fucking take a math quiz they fucking doing algebra kids and, are and fucked it's fucking multiplication yeah, <laughs> yeah. kids are fucked cause they, they got the drugs now and they have the phones mm-hmm. and then AI's coming I, I feel bad for kids porn is everywhere yeah they're screwed I, I, I definitely wouldn't have survived in this generation no I definitely couldn't have survived suicide's way up anxiety's up depression's up yeah, but do you think that's like that was like part of the plan on some conspiracy theory shit? Maybe. What what's the motive? I don't know, man. Make all these motherfuckers um porn addicted drug addicts. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess, but how do they benefit from that? Um yeah. Unless they're is. all pedophiles and like, let's get these kids horned up and, and uh drugged up and then we can diddle. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, nasty. All right. It's a theory. <laughs> I mean, I'm just talking about my fantasies. All right. We're jumping to some of these acts, Danny. You can hit me up, Danny, at the Danny Brown Show. That's Danny at the Danny Brown Show. First up, we got the kinky fuck. Axe Danny. Mm-hmm. Yo, Danny. All right, I'm going to be straight with you. I got a real close friend who's constantly getting into some weird kinks. He's always been into different stuff than most of us, and he keeps re- he keeps retraining his Instagram algorithm so that he gets exactly what he's into at the moment and keeps spamming <laughs> us with that shit. Lately, he's gotten into armpits and it's getting kind of creepy. Ugh. He even scores them out and tells us about his criteria with a ranking and all. We are starting to get freaked out about it. The spam Jesus. is just too much and it keeps coming at the weirdest time. So, Danny, what can we do about it? Should we intervene the fuck out of our buddy? Peace, Jay. I mean, no, I'm not the one to kink shame anybody. I mean, let him do his thing. I, I would just think, you know, if you're not into that kind of shit, just you should be very vocal about it and tell him, like, you know, I ain't with you with the armpit sniffing. Yeah. The whole fucking kink shit, you know? I mean, I think that's the purpose of having a kink is that you keep it to yourself until you find somebody that you're comfortable with to be able to share that shit. That's the beauty of the internet. There's some other weird armpit psycho out there just like you. You know, they don't, I don't think you're supposed to walk around talking about your kinks, you know? That's no. not like, you know, you got to keep shit private. And plus, you know, especially when you're in a relationship, you yeah. know, and then you're talking to your friends about your kinks and, uh, you know, 
friends are creepy too. Of course, but that's, like, oh, that's what he doing with that bitch. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you telling all your business, man. You can't be doing that, man. You got to keep that shit together. These kink guys have got it made. They like feet. They like armpits. They like whatever. That's armpits just out there. There's a lady holding a, a strap on a bus with her big old pit hanging out, and this guy's drooling. Yeah, he I think he's got it made. I think kink. I think armpit kink is like more like some gay shit. That's, oh, that's the, interesting. That, that's their whole deal. I like hairless. I'm a feet guy myself. Really? Yeah. I'm jealous. I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, nothing more turned off to me. Like, I get real turned off by a girl with bad feet. Sure. Like, that's just disgusting to me. That's you know? tough. Or a real like, hoof. I like real big feet, you know? like You, you, you got, like big. No, I'm saying oh, I hate big. Oh, you hate like, big. I, I see. You know, even though, you know, tall, tall women could be pretty and shit, but that's the one thing that, you know, I'm like, man, your feet big as fuck, though, bitch. Like, you wear the same size as me. <laughs> I don't want you in my closet putting on my Jordans and shit, you know? <laughs> oh, my wife's got some real pig, like Bigfoot feet. Uh, oh, it's, like a, it's like a Clydesdale. I got to put a, a horseshoe on there. I'm scraping it off. Crazy nails. It's a bummer. But I think that tells a lot about a woman, a woman that take care of her feet says a lot i mean if you ain't taking care of your feet then what that pussy looking like bitch like, oh it's got to be disgusting it's like a horse's mouth it's got yeah. teeth and i put a carrot <laughs> in it sometimes i feed it with a uh, sugar cube that's yeah so yeah I, I i would say i'm a feet not necessarily like a feet guy it's like oh jerk me off with your feet i ain't into that kind of shit you know i'm more of just like i like to look at them yeah okay all you right know, like be out in public and shit <laughs> see i'm jealous uh. <laughs> staring at toes the feet do nothing for me. I wish they did. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I guess it's a good kink to have. All what right. about tits? You like tits? Of course. Okay. I mean, I'm more of an ass man than a tit man. I yeah. Would say. I'm black. You know. You are. We like them booties. All right. But yeah, I mean, I like both. I mean, it's nothing like a fat ass though. A fat right? ass is good with a small waist. It's hard yeah, to beat. You see it bouncing around in the kitchen while they washing them dishes and shit. You're like, damn, uh, bitch, you got a fat ass. Yeah, and wearing those little shorts, you know. Oh, the shorts. I've never been blessed. I never see. That's I. I feel like that's one of like the curses of a man. Like whatever you super duper into, you probably never. Really, I never really had a woman with a nice big juice. What? Shirt. I can't even really. Hand, I mean, I've been with women, but. I, I don't even think I can handle it, to be honest. Call in, ladies. I'm sure there's a big no, I'm bottom a, I'm whore a man out there. right now. I'm, a, I'm, okay. I'm with my lady. Sorry, I thought you were uh, out fishing. Fuck no. Got I'm it. over that shit, man. It's too hard, man. Got to yeah. jump us right into the next one, man. We got All right. stage five clinger. Clin Ugh. Clinger. All right. Hey, Danny, I'm 27 years old and started using the date nap hinge recently. Mm. I went on a few dates with this girl. Once things started to get hot and heavy, she let me know she's saving herself for marriage. I politely let her know that that would be a problem for me and that we shouldn't continue this relationship. But now I feel that I have a stage five clinger on my hands. She mm. is texting me paragraphs saying, I just want to talk. Uh -oh. I'm worried that if I meet up with her, she'll be really upset with me. Should I hear her out or should I ignore all her messages and just go on with my life? P.S. What do you think of Call of Duty Warzone? Shots <laughs> out to Harrison Wynn. I don't play Call of Duty and shit. That's, I just don't play fucking war shooting games. That's just not. When I play video games, I want to feel happy inside. You mm. know, I like fucking RPGs and shit. You yeah, know? a little Mario Kart. Yeah, you know, just some fun, wholesome, you know, family fun, you know? Sure, I'm with you. But, um. Pac Man. It, they know hinge though, like looking for. Uh, um, I guess that's probably more common now. People looking for husbands and shit on dating apps. But I just thought y'all was on that motherfucker to fuck. I thought so too. That's why I got off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all these girls like not looking for hookups. You're like, well, what are we doing here? This yeah. is uh, it's Tinder. But far as like having, I mean, maybe she really did like you or something. I mean, you can never really, you know, don't don't look down on your blessings if you feel like she was a very attractive girl no. and you think she's nice. Get out of there. Sounds like she's on unhinged. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that's that girl's crazy waiting for marriage. Come on, it's twenty twenty four. Live your life, you queef. Get yeah. up there. Get some dong. Yeah. But twenty seven, I feel like they're around the same age. That clock's starting to tick for her. She like, oh, I gotta you know. That's crazy. She's got plenty of going. time. Freeze those eggs, bitch. But sometimes, you know, bitch sometimes, you know, you hung out with her and she's like, I'm saving myself for marriage. That probably was an excuse. She probably was on her period or something. Mm. And didn't know, you know. So her hitting you back up, probably like, nigga, you can get this but sometimes bitches ain't just with that. You gonna fuck on a first date type of shit, course, so they're gonna course. use any type of excuse to, you know, yeah. to still try to keep you around, and, right? You know, and you know, maybe for her to be hitting you back up, and you told her that that wasn't gonna work, you know, I think she wanna fuck. So, all right, well, you know, women are weird because they'll do that thing whenever a woman says we're not having sex tonight. Yeah, and then you still hit. You know, you're getting laid. Yeah. So good luck out there, but the stage five clinger thing is a real bummer. Yeah, you know, when clingy women. No, no, that's the worst. I mean. I just like to feel wanted. 
I do too. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Makes me feel like a bad bitch. Like, yeah, treat me like a bad bitch, you know? Yeah, but those ladies can turn. You know, something's off there. Psycho. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, possessive, yeah. She's going to boil his puppy or something. It just makes me feel wanted, so I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we got rough times. Danny, my wife has a problem. My wife's family has a problem like we all do. Recently, my mother-in-law got some stupid fucking dog no one wanted. It got passed around from one family to the next, mm. then finally ended up at my house after the decision was made to find a home or send it to the pound. Three days later, we gave that super sweet dog to my parents. As soon as my mother-in-law found out my parents had it, she wanted her puppy back. Then I got a call from my parents talking about how my mother-in-law's boyfriend just showed up on her doorstep unannounced asking for the stupid-ass dog. Damn. I lost my shit, called my mother-in-law, and gave her way more than she bargained for. We all have essentially not spoken since. Do I owe that boundary crosser an apology? Thank you for your help. Be dizzle. Shots out, Brian. Um, yeah, man, I mean... I love dogs, so I'm a pet guy myself, yeah. man. So I really feel bad for the dog that y'all passing it around like I a know. nasty whore. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like a blunt at a don't party. Don't nobody want the dog. Then they want the dog. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's a, it's a it's a living thing, and th- this dog is a gift. Shit has got to stop. You're mm-hmm. giving me a responsibility. I got to feed it, wash it, clean it. You know, pick up the shit. That's not a good gift. No, it's it's horrible. That's the worst thing I could possibly think of is somebody just show up because then you just stuck. You're like, oh man, but. Yeah, I, I would never give someone a pet for a fucking present, man. That's just not yeah. cool. Yeah, well, like, where, where does it end? What if I just give you a Guatemalan kid? Hey, happy birthday. Here you go. Here's a choo-choo. I don't trust people that don't really love animals like that. Like, because, I mean, you know, you give somebody a fucking dog or something, what are they fucking abuser type shit or really, like neglected and shit? Like, that's True. The, the worst shit. You ever see those fucking, those dog commercials, those pound, they got the dogs in the cage just looking all sad and shit like, you can feed this dog. Oh. That shit, I turn the channel every time. Kills me, kills I can't, me. I can't watch that kind of shit, man. No. I, told, I, I, I would say, man, if she wants the damn dog back, just give her the damn dog because she had the dog first. I here, mean, here. But know. I hope she doesn't shit on it, you know. I don't want it to be mean to the dog. Yeah, you don't want to fucking, you know, I mean, if she wants the dog back, give the dog back. You know, I, that's what I would say, man. But, Isn't it funny? We watch a murder documentary all day and a serial killer or whatever, but a dog getting hurt. Yeah, can't no, do I it. can't fuck with that shit. Same. I can't fuck with that shit. The Danny Brown Show is sponsored by BetterHelp. We all know that the summertime is approaching, our social lives can get a lot crazy. So it's always good to have someone you can talk to. With BetterHelp, you don't even have to leave your house. You can just wake up, go right to your computer, you can be in your PJs and get all your feelings out. You don't have to hold them inside. One thing about therapy that's been good for me, especially while I've been out here on the road, is being able to have someone to talk to because we know being on this road out here can get very lonely sometimes. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed, convenient, and flexible to be suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch at any time with no additional charge. BetterHelp is great, man. We could all use someone to talk to, so please give BetterHelp a try if you really need someone to talk to. Shots out to BetterHelp. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Danny Brown to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash Danny Brown to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Danny Brown. All right, next up we got N-Word Baiting. Hey, Danny. You liked it out a little too much. (laughs) I wrote this one. Okay. I've known my best friend since freshman year of high school. We're so close. We're basically like brothers, but... Where we lived, I was the token white kid at school. Ever since we became bros, he's been trying to get me to say the N-word for the past five years, and I always refuse because of the past stuff. I'm sure you know. Should I just go <laughs> ahead and say it or stay ten toes down and not say it? Much love, Chris. No, don't fucking say it. It's horrible. I even find myself, I mean, that's just the way motherfuckers talk growing up in the hood and shit, but I'm more me, me as I get older, I'm trying my best not to say it as much. Really? You know, yeah. I tr- I, that's why I say brother a lot. Mm, same and here. So I try to switch it up, man. Like, I, it's just, I mean, I don't know. It's just not, I, I just realized that there's no other race that uses a fucking slur to fucking show a fucking, um, an endearment term. That's true. You guys took it. We, we, we invented it. Yeah. But you guys really made it empowering. That was a good move. So at this point, it's, I mean, I don't, is it really empowering though? Like, because, the way I look at it is like, you know, just just the word in general. If if, if someone's like, yo, who want to hang out with my buddy? He's a real nigga. 
You know what I'm saying? What do you first think? You're like, oh, shit. We about to be some bullshit tonight. You get what I'm saying? It's not like a fucking positive term to use, you know? So I don't know, man. That, that's an epidemic. I went to public school in a predominantly black neighborhood, and it was a lot of like, come on, just say it, just mm-hmm. say it. I, it was It was tough. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's in music everywhere. So I know a lot of these kids, I mean, they don't mean no harm. No, it it was fun. But, you know, I I just think it's just one of those words that you just got to just like, it's like any other slur to me. Like, none of them are good. Sure, sure. So it's like a lot of shit come with that shit. I mean, if you're going to say it, just be prepared for what comes with it. You might get your ass whooped one day, you know? There you go. But, I mean, you know, if you're in your car by yourself singing alone to some gangster rap. I can't be mad at you if you drop a couple of M-bombs. I ain't around. You know, I don't care, you know? <laughs> but that's just what it is, man, you know? But yeah, I, I just think, you know, I, I do find myself just, especially you hanging around like a bunch of white people and you just saying nigga all day. It's just cringy to me at this point, you know? So I'm just trying my best not to say it as much. There you go. Hey, Richard Pryor had the same thing. Yeah, it's just, it's weird. It's just fucking weird. Because then you find out you go to these, like, he, like that whole Richard Pryor thing. He's like, he go to other countries and shit, and black people don't talk like that to each other. That's like, true. Even in fucking Europe. Like, even, if they say nigga, it sounds weird, though. Like, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up, my nigga? You're yeah. Like, Damn, dog. <laughs> Calm down. It sounds very racist it, that way. It does. It sounds, <laughs> sounds more racist. <laughs> in a British accent, you're like, hold up, man. Goddamn, yeah. man. Chill out. <laughs> Chill out with the fucking nigga words, man. I heard there's some uh, friction, but between American black and African black. Is it that definitely true? is. They hate really? us. Really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's just like they don't look at us like we real Africans. Like, they look at us like, uh, you know, they're like, you ain't, you ain't a real nigga. Right. <laughs> like, we the real, we the official shit. You yeah, know what I'm saying? You don't have a spear. Y'all got Americanized and shit, you know? Right, right. But it's crazy. When I was in um, Africa, the best KFC I had in my life. I don't know why that... <laughs> the homeland. I don't know why that was a thing, man. Yeah, yeah. well, I think America does that. Like... Jews move here and they become like a Woody Allen. You go to you go to Israel and Jews are like tough, you know, cool, hot guys. Oh, really? Yeah, America fucks people up. Look at the Greeks. The Greeks were doing great, you know, and now they're here and they run the diner. That's crazy, man. So you um, <laughs> fucking fucking gyros and shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly, shit. exactly. <laughs> just some landlord fucking with a tzatziki sauce, crazy <laughs> man. Yeah. It's- I just exactly. hate I just hate fucking uh eating fucking guy rolls in public, man. It just looked like you just fucking was in a bukkake or something after you finished that motherfucker, man. <laughs> that white sauce that is all over you. That shit be everywhere, man. I, I know. Can't. You look I, like Mia Khalifa. I love that shit. I'll be wanting extra tzatziki, man. I put that shit everywhere, man. <laughs> it's the best. Because growing up in Detroit, we got a, a, a huge fucking um, Arab community. Mm-hmm. So it was always like the best restaurants. Like you get shawarmas and all that kind of shit. So I grew up eating that shit. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, dude, that spit, that thing with the meat on it. Yeah. Oh, and they shave that off. There's nothing better. Really good in um, London, too. That's yes. Like they, they got the fire spots out there. Like on a late night after the club and shit, be tipsy. They call it donor. Get one, yeah, they do. Get yeah. one of those fucking shawarmas. You're like, man. Oh, shit, yeah. Hit the spot, man. Well done, a rab I haven't really found any good... I mean, you know, Texas, they do everything good, but I can't say I really found, like, an amazing gyro spot here. That's a good point. It is. A, um, they do have this one, like, Chicago-themed restaurant here, mm. which they, they do them, and they they all right, but I, I figured out the hack with that shit. You just got to order a pita on the side, and they give you a whole <laughs> bunch of gyro meat in the tub. Yeah. I think they figured out my hack. They stopped doing that shit for me, man. I was like, fuck. They, yeah. they on to me. Uh, nothing better than that. Lamb. I love lamb. Hell yeah. That's my shit. So good. So you um you're from New Orleans, right? Yes, sir. You you ever got into like any other fucking New Orleans like rap and shit? Oh my god, yeah, Cash Money Millionaires. I mean, Lil Wayne's from New Orleans. We had Juvenile. We had uh all those guys. Yeah, like, I, I, super New Orleans was running. I mean, they still killing shit. They got Young Boy now and mm-hmm. um Kevin Gates. I mean, the first Cash Money song, um, it's one of the craziest songs I've ever heard in my life. It's about a person going through a um, heroin withdrawal. Mm. It's called I Need a Bag of Dope, Need a Bag of Dope. You ever oh, heard that song? I've probably heard it. It's one of the funniest songs I've ever heard about. Like, I know it shouldn't be funny, but every time I want to get a laugh, I, I always listen to that shit, man. But I need a bag of dope, need a bag of dope. And they just talking about how they fiending for this bag of dope so fucking much. It's like an old ass uptown song, man. Yes, yes. Well, that was the cool thing. It was very integrated. Like, they would play your high school dance and oh, shit. Yeah. yeah, I saw Lil Wayne at the mall when he was 14. Mm. Yeah, it was fun. It was Lil everywhere. Lil Wayne, he is like the Michael Jackson of hip hop, man. You think? Yeah, because I remember as a time when Lil Wayne first came out, he didn't even cuss. 
He was just right. as dope as everybody else. Yeah, man. great it lyrics. Like, it was almost like, I can't wait till this motherfucker start cussing. Yeah. And then he started cussing and never stopped. It was crazy, man. He's the Michael Jackson, but yeah. he looks like he would get diddled by Michael somehow. <laughs> he's just so little. Because he was, I mean, he just was way like, um, he was just like extra, like way like his skill level when he first started out, it was like he was a grown man. So no one ever, because you know, there's been a lot of kid rappers, you yeah. know, like Bow Wow and shit like that. And you know, Criss Cross or whatever, but you looked at that as kid rap. You yes. never really took them that serious as like super duper like MC lyricist type shit. But since Lil Wayne came out, it was always like, oh, this motherfucker's cold. Like, oh yeah, well he was one of the best, man. Hanging with the, you know, Manny Fresh yeah. and Juvenile. So he was in there with, yeah, the, with just all being, that. BG, just being BG. around that, that would fucking just... I guess it would up your levels up a yeah, lot. Yeah, exactly. But the cool shit about that, that he was doing a lot of the hooks. And you know, hooks is right. like the fucking, that's like the main point of songwriting. Sure, so sure. So for him to be that young and be in that, that, that school, man, I don't think, and then you, we, we've we lived long enough to where we've seen Lil Wayne change his style up like three, oh, four yeah. times, you know? Like he had that whole New York phase where he was just rapping like Jay-Z and shit. Yeah, yeah. Wearing bape. And he was killing that shit then. I feel like that's when he really started to like, we watched him learn in real time. Yes, yes, you exactly. Know? But I think his lyrics are, they're almost like comedy lines. They're like jokes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, like punch a, lines, set up punch Yeah, lines. exactly. Yeah. What was the one, the famous one? Uh, I move, real G's move in silence like lasagna. It's a horrible line to me too. Really? Yeah, that, that's, I, it's That's horrible. a great joke. I know, I, I, I mean, I get it, but I was like, this is, that's just, we call that reaching. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, we That was that. a reach. That was a reach. Jack reaching. All right, we're jumping to some of these musical Good, but you um skate too. Like, oh I yeah, some shit when you were skating. Big Did you ever um, used to um watch like a lot of skate tapes and shit? Of course, all day long. Four one one and Toy Machine, Girl, Mouse, all that shit. Yeah, I love skate I, videos. I've never been good at skating. That's like one thing I'm jealous of. I wish you know, growing up in Detroit, you only got like three months where you could skate. That's true. But uh, one thing I used to watch a lot of skate videos, and I used to get put up on a lot of cool music. Yeah. Through the skate videos, like Baker, Death Wish, and all that right, kind of right. shit. Like, they would have, like, dope-ass fucking underground hip-hop that I never really heard of and shit like that. Then I'd be, like, seeking it out and shit. So I'd I say that, you know, just say, like, skate tapes and shit put me up on it. It, it, it developed my style in some way. Because they yeah. wasn't, like, playing, like, top 40 rap songs no, and shit no. like that. They was playing, like, a lot of underground shit. I'd be like, what the fuck song is that? Definitely. So it put me up on a lot of shit watching those skate tapes. Can I just say, back to the New Orleans rap, I think... uh those guys made Bling. Yeah, they did. Big. Yeah, it's a fucking it's in a Webster Dictionary now. Yeah, Bling yeah, Bling. Which is fucking crazy, man. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, but yeah, yeah, back to scale. But I even the whole Master P shit. I feel like oh, um, yeah. Master P model for um, the way he was making music and releasing the albums, and that was pre-internet days. I feel like a lot of people are taking on that work ethic to this day. Like, him was just releasing fucking albums every fucking month, and it was almost like- Oh, wow. You just bought them because you was- you know, it was like collecting them. Yeah, like you wanted yeah. like like baseball cards or some shit. Like I got to get every one, like Pokemon or something. You right, know? <laughs> right. That's so, ahead of its time too, because that's kind of how people do it now with Spotify mm -hmm, and yeah. everything. They, they drop just a feed ton the of algorithm, stuff. You know, exactly. And he just was dropping tape every month. Then, but I, what really was dope about it was that he 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 promoted them. Like you would see the album cover, and you'd be like, "Oh, who's this bitch Mercedes with this fat ass right here? <laughs> Can't wait till that come out." You know, yeah. so he was kind of like anticipating people you never even heard of. You just knew they was just affiliated with No Limits. So he was like, "This shit gonna be dope," you know. Yeah, and he always had a beef with somebody, and he would talk about it, and that was fun to keep up with. One of my favorite um, New Orleans MCs that I really feel bad about the way it all turned out was Mystical, man. Oh, uh, yeah. People don't really give Mystical, like, I mean, obviously you can't now. I mean, he's fucking essayed all over the place. Right. You know? Yeah, he was wild. Well, you ever heard um, uh, Drag Him From The River? Mm-hmm. That, that's the whole song is about killing Mystical. <laughs> they hate him, and it's an amazing song. It's like, uh, I think it's UNLV. Yeah. Great song, but uh, yeah, he had a lot of enemies. I mean, he started doing meth and shit, which uh, just got real wild for him at the end, man. I, I mean, know. after doing fucking eight years in prison, then come out and do the same shit again, yeah. it was just like, ah, oh, you really got a fucking problem. But Mystical, man, he was one of those rappers that some, some you know, it's just come like coastal things, you know, where you feel like a person from the South can't be as lyrical as a a rapper from New York, yeah, right, kind of thing. That's but bigotry. he was, and then I and I really do hate all the all all, all the hate that fucking Silk the Shocker gets. Oh, like yeah. People keep they make these lists and then they talk about how he's like one of the worst rappers. It's like, bro, you wasn't there. You couldn't have been there because Silk was fucking amazing, man. Yeah. Who, who do you think is the worst rapper ever? Like that's big, um, all hype, no substance. I mean, it's a lot of them now because they just it's no one being creative or being like original. Yeah. Type shit, but. 
I don't know. I would think. Uh, don't say my boy, man. Tom McDonald. Uh oh, Tom McDonald sounds like a honky. He definitely a honky. Oh okay. But yeah, Tom McDonald got to be the worst. Really? He made that song with Ben Shapiro. That shit was horrible, oh, man. Oh, that went number one. Yeah, that shit sucked. Man. <laughs> we don't fuck with that shit. That was all just novelty. I but gotta yeah, hear this shit. I would say Tom McDonald, man, or any. I would put them all in the category. Any of those white rappers that just try to rap fast because they heard Eminem do it, and right? Just saying a bunch of nothing, and it's like, oh, you, I'm spitting bars. It's like, no, the fuck, you're not. <laughs> It's saying a bunch of nothing, so I would say that's like my worst genre of rap. Okay, the fast rapping white boys—they are horrible. Got it. It's none of them are good. Uh, and I say that to say, I mean, it's some of the, uh, my favorites. It's not like a race thing or nothing like that, because it's like you got white rappers like LP or like Aesop Rock. Like those are fucking phenomenal lyricists that don't really, you know, try to. I, I, I hate a, a white rapper where I listen to him and I'm like, oh, this motherfucker white. Like, you nah. <laughs> <laughs> like when I first heard LP as a kid, I didn't know he was fucking white. I'm like, and I'm not saying put a black scent on or nothing like that. Right. It's just the way you approach in a genre, you know? Mm, but I yeah. guess it's the same way for like rock music. When you hear a fucking a, a black rock singer or some shit and he trying to sound like a white boy, you're like, oh, this guy sucks, you know? Like the Hootie, Hootie and the Blowfish? Yeah, Hootie's. Hootie's a wild guy, man. Hootie just looked like the type of motherfucker. He just having like crazy fucking swinger party. I was thinking shit. the same thing. He's got that vibe. He's got that cowboy hat on he and just, the sleeveless. He just seemed like one of those nasty motherfuckers. Man. Oh, yeah. He's plowed through a lot of white chicks oh, at a honky tonk. Definitely, man. He just show up, man. Lay it down. But yeah. Let to, her cry. Yeah, Hootie. Yeah, he, I just can't get with Hootie, though, man. Darius <laughs> Rucker, man. I, I, just know he, I just know you're a freaky motherfucker, man. Something yeah. About me, something about him, man. Just. He likes armpits. He like race play. Yeah. <laughs> Call me nigga, bitch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what are your um, top five artists of bands? Oh, geez. I'm so bad with music. Uh, it's all going to be stuff you hate. I, I like old stuff. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm music is subject, subjective for me, man. I, okay. I listen to everything, to be honest. Well, I love, uh, I love Sam Cooke. That's great. What are you talking about? Oh, okay. All One right. One of the legends, man. Oh, all right. I'm, I'm so behind the times. Um, who that's good else? Sunday. That's good Sunday listening music. Sam Cooke, the best, the best. Uh, Feel let's like you got to eat some grits to Sam Cooke. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy! Did you hear how he was killed? Yeah, I, I watched the documentary. And so did I. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Shot by the hotel clerk, I yeah. believe. Crazy. Uh, who There's else? There's a lot of foul play involved in that shit, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's true. You ever listen to uh, Van Morrison? I have no idea who's Van. Oh Morrison. man, you like Van? Yeah. He's the best. That's, who's Van Morrison? That's some moody shit. He's very uh, emotional. He's an Irish guy. Okay. But really good. Um, like some, what, what kind of style of music is this like? Uh, I guess you'd say kind of folk rock. Oh, okay. Kind of shit. Yeah, I'm definitely not getting down to the folk. It's, I, you, mean, I, I like Joni Mitchell. Would that be considered uh, yeah, folk? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Joni Mitchell was folk? Yeah. Okay, I like Joni Mitchell. I All mean, right. we like, because, you know, hip hop, we like to sample shit. So she got, you could sample her shit. Like, yeah. And then, of course, you know, the white guy, I do like a Pearl Jam. No, Pearl Jam is great. Hey, all right, all right. And then I, if we're going rap, I got to go early 90s. Yeah. I don't, I don't love the auto-tune. I can't say I'm a huge fan of it, but it, it is certain um, genres that I like it in. I don't really like it too much in rap, but mm -hmm. I'm a good, you know, I like PC music, hyper-pop shit, so yeah. it goes great with that, you know. That's true, that's true. But, like, those early days of, uh, like, Jay-Z mm -hmm. and stuff like that and young young Kanye, yeah. I like, but uh, it's, I can't get into it as much anymore. It's a lot of people don't know, man. Jay-Z, he really should be credited for, like, bringing the South to, like, the East Coast. Yeah. And, like, the, you know surrounding areas and shit because like he was the first one like he hopped on the juvenile Han remix and then um you know doing stuff with like UGK so he was always like a fan of down south hip hop man which mm. was so he brought that cuz you know I feel like back in the day everybody looked at it like you ain't the real hip hop right like, you know yeah yeah well, well where do you where do you stand on uh because i love this group i love outcast outcast is one of the greatest okay. groups ever. i didn't know if that was corny or no, whatever fuck no i love outcast outcast is one of those it's, it's like one of the they don't it's not a bad outcast album it's no never been a bad outcast album I, I wish to this day they still you know was still around like doing shit but same like um I andre heard... 3000 is like one of the best rappers to ever live okay i heard he's coming back i mean he's playing the flute Oh no! Yeah, he had a he had a he made a jazz album. It's a flute album. Oh. I checked it out. It's a lot of noodling. 
Oh, I hate noodling. Yeah, man. It Damn. Was, it, I, I, I'm not going to say it was bad or good because I, I don't really feel like... I mean, I listen to jazz shit, you know, Ornette Coleman, shit like that, mm-hmm. but... Um, yeah, I, it was a lot of noodling. Damn, He's that sucks. actually playing um, live. He's actually on tour with it. Okay. So I wouldn't mind going to see a show. Sure. I, I think it probably would translate better for me live than, than to see it. Are we talking... <laughs> Yeah, that whole th- oh he's man, playing, I can't picture he's playing that. the flute. Jesus, that's yeah. wild. Yeah, there's been a lot of people known that you can just find Andre 3000 just walking around random places playing the flute. <laughs> that has been a thing. Like they'll see him like at the airport or something. He's just walking around playing it. And I'm so pissed, man, because everybody hilarious. always got these pictures with Andre, man. He's yeah. playing this fucking flute, and it's this one. It's this one artist that I really would love to just sit and have a conversation with. Definitely, that's. It sounds like a black punishment. Hey, if you don't get your act together, we're gonna we're gonna make you play the flute. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's why. But yeah, Atlians, Aquamini, those were great. Yeah, Aquamini is the, one of the fucking best hip hop albums to ever exist. Like, um, cause they just genre blend a lot, and I feel like it put, yes. put me up on so much other music that they were influenced by that I probably wouldn't have heard if I wouldn't, you know, listen to fucking Outkast, man. But yeah, Outkast is like. No one could ever fucking say anything bad about no. Outkast. I, I, I always argue myself is like uh, my two favorite groups. and I mean, Wu-Tang is my favorite group all the time. Oh, really? Okay. But I always find myself battling between Outkast and Mob Deep because I feel like they both have like... Mob Deep, really? Yeah, Mob Deep, mm, I man. don't know Mob Deep. Mob Deep, man. You know Shook Ones. Okay. You know that song. I'm pretty sure you heard it. But yeah, Mob Deep is... My, my, yeah, I don't know, man. That's like... See, it looks like early 90s. Yeah. There you, you know, go. You know Shook Ones. That's the best, yeah. Even when uh, Outkast did the, they both did the dual album. The yeah, Love speaker Below. Box. Yeah, then that was great. Love Below is amazing. I still listen to Love Below like at least a few times a year. Yeah. That's like, I mean, obviously I'm not drinking no more. That was like my drunk album. <laughs> I'm not drinking no more, so I, I can't say I, I, I gave it any spins. But I still think about it. It's one of those, you know, you hear oh, songs yeah. in your head sometimes. All the time. Like fucking, um, yeah, man. Hey, uh, uh, and then Hey, I uh, was like the, you know, mm-hmm. that was their big pop hit. Hey, I was amazing though, man. I Great remember when song. it first came out, there was a lot of people hating on it. Really? I liked it the first time I heard it. Same. I mean, I just knew Andre'd always be this eccentric person, man. So I always wanted to be surprised by whatever he did. Yeah, you know? yeah, definitely. I think the one thing that I probably would give him a strike, I didn't really care for Idle Wild. Mm. That movie, did you ever see that? I never saw it. It's like a movie and it had a soundtrack to it. Even though it was some dope ass songs on there too, though, but. I don't think I really liked Idlewild that much. Yeah, he's an underrated hot guy, too. I feel like uh, he's a handsome dude. No, he had Erica Badu. You oh, can't just, really? Yeah, okay. they got a kid together. What? Yeah. You just can't pull Erica Badu. No, but, no. You know, she ain't Erica Badu. That's a that's a baddie right there, you know? Oh, yeah, great armpit. <laughs> <laughs> I was I actually had a chance I was gonna um actually work with Erica Badu one time and I fucked it up just being drunk. <laughs> it was one of those times I was drunk and I was on a hangover and then um they gave me her number and they told me to hit her up. And I hit her up and was like, Yo, super fan, really, you know, excited to work with you and this and that and then she just texted me back, peace. Oh And I was like, Peace, yeah, see, it sounded like she was curbing me, right? right? But no, that's the way she greets people. You oh, know, she's like, What's okay. up, peace? So then I, I text back like, Man, why you tell me to text your man, motherfucker shit? <laughs> and fuck the whole shit up, just jumping the gun, man. So I apologize to Miss Erica Badu. She's a queen. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't and and that's how you know I had so many demons on me. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Where someone texts me peace and then I just fucking black <laughs> out like, Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I I'm the same way. She actually owns a um venue in Dallas. I played oh. their um, last tour, and it's a fucking amazing. It's it's fucking dope. The sound in there, like you can tell when a fucking artist, fucking um, was a was a part of a venue. And, yeah, because because the acoustics and shit, the, like the sound in there is fucking amazing, man. So I, I I would love to go back and play there. That's one thing. Um, Bombs away. I find out about um the, the venues I like. Like people always, you know, judge the crowd. Like if it's any crowd, but mm. with music, man, it's all about the sound of the sure. venue, man. You gotta have it like right, man. Because I've played some shitty places, man. Be like, man, this shit sound horrible. Because they all built different for different shit. You yeah, know? yeah. With rap music, you know, you gotta have a fucking the bass and shit hitting hard. You want to feel that shit under your feet, you know. Mm. And then you, but it still got to be able to. The crowd got to hear my lyrics, type shit. Yeah, is that a thing? Like in stand up, like this room sounds like hundred percent. You got to have a low ceiling. You got to tight. You know, it's got to be like a little kill box. We call it. Mm-hmm. And uh, if it's too big and too cavernous, you lose the laughs because the bounce, the sound bounce, and it's yeah. like an echo or some shit. Yeah, echo is bad, and you don't. You want it to be like a conversation. Mm-hmm. Intimate is the key. 
So sometimes you get these big rooms, like these big comedy clubs, and the back row is just, it, forget about it. Yeah. They're gone. I never thought about that shit, man. But yeah, just playing shows, I always found that the sound has been my biggest gripe with venues that I don't like. Like it just, it's not even, the crowd could be there, it could be fun, but the shit, it sounds like shit, you know? Yeah. And you can sound check your ass off. It exactly. don't fucking matter, man. It's just the way this shit built. And sometimes you do a sound check, and then when the people get in the room, it's a whole different world. Yeah, it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of take that into account, because, you know, when you sound checking, you're going to get a little bit of echo. So I'm mm -hmm. like, man, when it fill up, you know, the sound is not going to bounce that much. But I kind of think, I, I I thought about it, like, oh, shit, it might be, um, I think it might be actually worse for comics in that sense. You yeah, know? yeah, because you got to hear every word. You, God damn it. Now, wait, how's the sobriety going? How long have you made it? Um, I'll be a year in April. Whoa! Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, it's been going good, man. Oh, man, I it's couldn't do it. <laughs> you can't if you wanted to. I, I mean, but you I ain't like fucking it. up the way I was. So. Oh, really? Yeah. I was a, I was a problem, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I, was, I didn't like the person that I was, you know. Yeah. So I, I'm happy. I will say I'm a lot happier, man. It's, it, I, right. I never expected that part. Yeah. You know? I just always thought like, ah, oh, I get sober, I wouldn't be as creative as I was. Yeah, come on. I wouldn't be funny, but yeah, all that shit is in you, yep. you know. Because even now, you. I'm just now starting to, um, it's even more like healthier habit type shit. Like I just work on music all the time now, but I just really just started to fucking plan out my next album, and I'm so I've never been so fucking excited to work. Yeah, in my fucking life, man. I love that's, to hear that's it. That's crazy shit. Because I always been like, all right, let me just do what I gotta do yeah. so I can fucking. Yeah get fucked up or, exactly you know, makes fucking money and shit you know but now it's like man i'm just so fucking inspired especially with the crew that i got that's coming along to work with me man i can't believe that i'm fucking i pulled it off like hell yeah so as soon as i finish this tour i got coming up i'm gonna fucking hit the ground running man all right well good congratulations yeah man is that um I mean, I know like with comedy and shit, you know, funny shit could probably happen for you all the time where you could just pull that like oh that's a bit i can pull that out pull it out is it like a set time do you just like write all the time or is it just like a set time? You're like, all right, I'm going to just, when this comes, I'm going to just hanker down and just really get put put the work down on it. Uh, f I think for every comic it's different, but for me, I have a funny thought in the shower or at a restaurant and I write down that thought. Mm -hmm. And then I go back to the house and uh, spend like an hour and change really fleshing it all out. Oh, so I do, I do the writing every day, but you got to have yeah. the notepad in case you come up with some some idea. No, that's where I've been at with, um. I mean, I've always been like that with music. Like you were fucking... Um, be in bed or something then yeah a fucking line popping your head and you're exactly like, Fuck, i gotta go get my phone and write this shit down my phone is downstairs it's right like, i'm gonna remember in the morning yeah <laughs> you never remember that shit you know what i'm saying of course. So, you never do you, you'll go oh, i'll remember it but you never do but i, I guess that's what i would say my, my my alcoholic phase i wouldn't get up for that phone no would, but now i get my ass up now yes. i'm like fuck that i gotta write this shit down so i do it's the same way with me in some sense i have like a just write a shit ton of lines down and a lot of like you know ideas or whatever I'm gonna do mm. and then when I finally sit down to write a song I have this to pull from yeah you know because yep. it's I mean it's 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 more alike than than a lot a lot of people might think in some sure because I, I some some shit I write be like oh this gonna be a beginning mm -hmm. you know this could be an ending and then I have like these just random lines up like that I'll be that'll be punch lines but then I sit down because you know you write into a beat so. She has the merits to a beat, and I'm right into the beat. And if I get stuck, then I go to my lines. Yes, yes, I hear you. And and booze is a creativity killer. Those yeah, hangovers, you can't think of anything. That's one thing I do not miss. Oh, I do not miss the hangovers, man. Uh, I'm there now. I mean, it's just having. I, I will say I'm a, probably a lot less fun. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I probably wasn't fun. But come on, look just at those going shoes. Out. I mean, just going out and shit. Right, yeah, right. The, look at that. my boy Mischief. Get that on film. Got the. Got the um yeah they they it's it's a baby shoe that's what it's called <laughs> they made shoes for babies you know yeah yeah mischief is my favorite brand they just make like crazy like art pieces and shit you know yeah. fashion has changed you got that right all right so what song you want to play at your funeral no oh, Jesus Christ that's a tough one uh small world after all <laughs> <laughs> uh, geez at the funeral that's a I, I'll I'll go um. I don't know if you can play it. It's probably too expensive. But uh, Dr. John, Such a Night. I played it at my wedding. Beautiful song. It's from New Orleans. It's a great tune. That that guy, he's a real weirdo. Oh, yeah. He looks crazy. He looks like he know magic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the music is magic. But I think if you heard the song, you would you would dig it. I'll check it out. Dr. I'll John. Check it out on my ride home. He's one of those. He does kind of sound black. I'll give, you, I'll give him that. 
Everybody in New Orleans sound black. That's true, <laughs> except for me. Yeah. Yeah, how you, know, how you didn't get the accent, man? Because I, I grew up around black people, and I think I, I differentiated. All the guys I knew in the suburbs, they talked black, because mm-hmm. there were no black people around. Yeah. So I, if I said anything blackish, they would check me. Yeah. So I, I kept it cracker. New Orleans accent is, I love it, man. It's like one of the sex when you hear, like, what's up, baby? Like, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> My friend says it's uh, Brooklyn with a Xanax. It's crazy, man. Yeah. So what was your first concert? Oh, geez. Uh, Aaron Neville. Aaron Neville. Yeah, Jazz Fest in New, in New Orleans. I yeah. was like nine. God damn, man. New you know, you know Neville? Yeah, I know Aaron oh, Neville. Yeah. He's the there he is. with that shit on his eye. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He fucked Erica Badu. He one of those black dudes that sound white, too. Yeah, yeah. He's mm-hmm. got the, the, what do you call it, the soprano the high voice kind of, yeah, but some some reason I feel like Aaron Neville beat the shit out of me, so I would never. <laughs> like he looked like he got hands. You yeah, know what I'm he does. Like he'll put the paws on you. So That's Aaron true. Neville, a real nigga to me. Right, he's a little genteel. There's a little gayness in the South. Really, everybody's got a little just a ribbon of homo. Well, I do declare, you know, holding that little mint julep mm-hmm. with the seersucker suit. New Orleans, man, it's that's one of the crazy. I don't know how you're not fat. Oh, it's tough. I mean, you're living in New York now, so. Yeah, I was a fat kid, for oh, sure. Oh, okay, yeah, because the food there is crazy. Look what y'all doing to Zion. He's fucking, <laughs> he can't handle himself out there, he's man. Doughy. He's He's just BBL crazy, <laughs> fucking eating crawfish every day. Well, that's the, the city pulls the evil out of you. Mm-hmm. It, there's something voodoo or whatever yeah, in the no, air. Yeah, no, I am scared of that shit. Oh, I yeah. Am, yeah, I do feel that vibe when I'm there. I love New Orleans, though. Every time I've been there, it's been fun. I mean, it's obviously not like a, a big market for me, so every show sure. I play it hasn't been too crazy, but. Same. I, um, I actually, I mean, when I, I just think about eating, I'm like, oh shit, I'm about to get some fucking some get, gumbo, get fucking oysters and yeah, shit, you know? Yeah, some fried shrimp. That oyster Rockefeller is the best Ooh. fucking, man, it's crazy, man. And you can't get it anywhere. I live in New York. We got Ethiopian food. I can't get uh, Cajun or Creole. Yeah. It's crazy. I love fucking New Orleans, man. It's just, and it's that whole, the second line shit. Yeah. I love that shit too, like. Fucking Hannibal, that motherfucker had a second line one time. I'm like, yes. this nigga is crazy. He just, he's like, you could just order it. You it's, could just, <laughs> just like 250 bucks. He just went to New Orleans and ordered a second line and just walked around with the motherfucker. Yeah. I'm like, this motherfucker <laughs> is crazy, man. He's got a bit about it. That shit is hilarious, man. Oh, yeah, I did one for my wedding. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, you, you were in New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? Gotta, gotta do it. Gotta keep the coat. That's one thing I love about certain places, man. The places that I really love to visit is, peop- is, the, is the places that kept their culture intact. Yes, yes. You know, like you go there, it's damn near like going to a whole another country but you know you're Completely. still in the states you know well don't you worry about the internet i feel like it's taken away from that yeah that's what i'm saying and yeah. but these places are like because new orleans they, they listen to the same style of music right. they dress the same way they don't they're not getting caught up in what fuck trends is going on in the world you know <laughs> they're like this is our shit baby yeah, hold yeah. It down, you know exactly it's definitely unique you can drink outside there's yeah. hookers everywhere the, the mardi gras indians you know jazz fest we invented jazz yeah no i i, I had spent some time in new orleans just being around going to like jazz clubs and shit yeah and just eating eating like a motherfucker hell yeah had alligator cheesecake wow that shit was crazy i'm like how the fuck alligator cheesecake like what the fuck is that shit yeah it was all right it wasn't nothing i returned to <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a sex move yeah it wasn't nothing I've returned to but alligator cheese yeah that's Ooh, that shit right I'm, there. I'm down that looks good last time I was there I had the best banana bread in my life oh we love banana I can't even fucking remember the restaurant but I'll figure it out when I go back but yeah oh, fuck fuck New Orleans man it's so good it's right. great I'm going for Jazz Fest I'm excited who's who's playing this year uh, it's a big one pull up the lineup but the, the Rolling Stones are the big uh, okay, the big Rolling draw Stones, which yeah. you know you can't go wrong there but I saw uh, John Baptiste last mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. He killed it. Oh, Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. The Killers, Anderson Pack, Greta Van Fleet. God damn it. Vampire oh. Weekend. This is a crazy lineup for Jazz Fest. Queen Latifah. Yeah. The Beach Boys. Fantasia. Wow. Jeez. Earth I love me fire. some Big Frida, though. Me too. I played, a, I played a few festivals with Big Frida, and she fucking tears it up every time. Oh, yeah. Um, Kim. I love Kim. Shouts out Detroit. Hey. Um... Stephen Marley, wow! You know, yeah, this is a crazy lineup, though. Oh yeah, it's gonna be some. Oh, it's gonna be some booties jiggling. You got that right. It's gonna, I'll have the phone out. Yeah, fucking up. Um, all right, yeah. So that's cool. Damn. I would love. To, I would love to go to a fucking jazz fest. That's where the milfs is at. All right. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll spin the wheel and get up out of here. Thank you so much for hey, coming through, thank man. Thank you, Danny. That was fun. honor to talk to you, man. You're oh, like one of the on. funniest motherfuckers going right now, man. I'll OD eventually.
Children of the Corn. Mm. The movie? That was actually a movie, right? Yeah. I've never movie. seen um, Children of the Corn. To me, Children of the Corn is a rap group. <laughs> it was um, Big L, Mace, and um, Cameron. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. They, they, when they first started out, they started out as a rap group. And they were... Um, Weird name. Yeah, children, because they were young. They were kids. Uh-huh. And, but they would rap these murderous ass, like, horrorcore, like, grave diggers type shit. Just, like, crazy fucking, just fucking shock value ass shit. Oh. Just say the craziest shit they can think of. Right, right. So, yeah. Yeah, there they go. They look like, look at them. They Damn. Like fucking gangsters. I didn't know that. Yeah, Children of the Corn. You got to go back and check. Mace was a monster. That's the, And they all had these crazy names. It was Murder Mace. Yep. And um, Killer Cam. Yeah. That's why he still keep his name, but. Didn't he go? He went like real religious. Who Mace? Yeah, yeah. he still he still is. I think okay. he's still preaching shit. You know, found God. Yeah, I mean, surviving P Diddy. Yeah, <laughs> it'll do it to you. <laughs> man, poor Meek Mill, huh? He's on the verge oh, of suicide. Man, it's crazy, man. <laughs> he's getting creamed. It was hilarious. I, I watched every tweet. It was always like watching a movie. Man. I know. I did too. I retweeted a few. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> he was like, I love pussy. I get pussy two times a day. Him and ac- uh, academics are really going yeah, at it. Yeah, academics always going at it with somebody, man. Jesus. You can't win with that guy, man. <laughs> I would just bow out. You just got to grace. Some people just got it, you know? Yeah. He's one of those ones. You just, you're not going to win, you know? Right, right. But yeah, the whole P. Diddy thing is it's it's crazy right now, man. I'm, I'm, I don't, I mean, you know, obviously it's a serious topic. It's like real victims and shit being involved. Sure. But, Constantly denying that you're not gay, man. It's crazy. And then when he put his album out, man, it was uh, called Heathenism. The first song was Came From The Bottom. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. I was like, it couldn't have been a worse ah, time, man. A confession. He had a song in there called Big Boy. It was oh. like, oh, just reading the track list of the album was like, oh, I don't know, man. Uh. <laughs> it looks a little crazy right now. It I couldn't know. have been worse timing. They got bad pictures of him with Bieber, Usher. It's not a good look. Yeah. But hey, just be gay. Oh, yeah, it's 2024. Motherfuckers don't give a fuck. Yeah. You know? Joe Buttons came out. Once there you he go. came out, is it, anybody could be gay if Joe Button gay. Exactly. Pete Diddles. Mean, he says he's bisexual or some shit, but yeah. Yeah. But that's, yeah. That's a good transition. You got to start by and then just come out full gay eventually. It's like Joe, once Joe Button did it, it don't even matter no more. So it's over. Taking it up the button. All right. There we go. We out of here. But you got some shit you want to plug? Oh, yeah. I got a podcast. We might be drunk. I got uh, Tuesdays with Stories. I'm all over the road. I'm coming to your town, folks. MarkNormanComedy.com. All right, man. Love you, motherfucker. See you. Same time, same channel. Peace.